Ukulele is a game made by the original creators of Banjo-Kazooie, and is a spiritual successor of the franchise, sort of like what The Outer Worlds is to Fallout. This is going to be a very structured video with different sections, and that includes topics like story, movement, and bosses. I'm going to have timestamps in the top comment under the video, and let's talk about a few things before the video starts. Not only does this game take heavy inspiration from Banjo-Kazooie, but it was also crowdfunded, meaning a lot of the help for making the game was from people that wanted to play it by giving the developers things like money. So without further ado, here's the first section of the video. In this game, we are immediately introduced to Capital B and his Duck Vice President. They are very well designed and fun to watch. We are shown Capital B's greed with his gold statue, and then are shown the game's sense of humor with the Vice President's statue. These are two very important things about the game that they make sure we know. The humor of the characters can be sort of stale sometimes, but Capital B was usually the exception. They explain the main plot of the game and how they want to steal books for money or whatever, and then they turn on their machine that collects all the books. We then get immediately introduced to Yuka and Laylee, the main protagonists, and they are very well designed. I love this simple yet creative design, and their dialogue is fun and silly for the most part. I'm just gonna add I wish the characters were a little more cartoony like the new Crash Bandicoot remakes, but that's just more of a preference. The book is then taken by the machine, and strange golden pages, or pages as they're referred to, are scattered around the world and, you know, everywhere. And the main plot is that, you know, you have to retrieve all the golden pages. The story is very simple, yet at the same time it's pretty creative, and it gives you a good reason to be out and about, and experience things throughout the world. So, I just want to mention a few more things, like the design for the basic enemies is also really good, I think it's really creative, and in every different world, there's usually different enemies that you can fight, I don't know, it, it all works out really well. Lastly, I'll mention the feathers that are throughout the worlds, they're just the coins of the game, they're used to unlock new abilities, and yeah, it's a pretty good system. I'm really conflicted because I love the movement of the game, but some things like the abilities can be a little annoying. So I guess let's start off with the good. Of course the movement in this game is amazing. It's really fun to just walk around the world and because it's a platformer of course it's going to be fun. Things like the roll are really nice to whip out and just use casually, and I don't know, it's really fun. Next let's talk about the abilities. Every level you're normally given two abilities, and then in between levels you're given another one. It's a really good way to pace the abilities, but at the same time, some abilities are definitely better than others. One thing that sucks is that I don't know what move to use when I'm doing a puzzle. There's so many abilities that some of them are sort of the same, and I'm just using the wrong ability when I should be using another. Also, the platforming in this game is really fun! Like, it just sucks that the puzzles have to be sort of mediocre, but the platforming is really fun. But I guess I'm gonna talk about this stuff more in the puzzle and platforming sections of this video. Now let's talk about some of the abilities. First of all, the zipline ability, this one is really fun to just pull out and use. Also, it's pretty obvious when you're supposed to use it, so it's never annoying. Then there's this bubble, and this one is a little more annoying. I mean, I can see why they put it in the game, but at the same time you get ice physics, and I don't know, it's, it's a little more annoying, but it's fine. Then there's these sort of power-up abilities, there's this fire one, and it allows you to spit out fire. There's a water one, and you can, of course, spit out water, and an ice one, and you can spit out sort of ice chunks. There's also ones that change your properties, like some make you sticky, some make you heavy, and yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. There's also a basic spin move, and it's very similar to the Crash Bandicoot spin move, and yeah, it, it works really well. And then there's this sonar ability. This one, I definitely hate the most. It's fine, I sort of understand why they have it in the game. It's sort of Laylee's move, but at the same time, it's sort of annoying because you never really know when to use it in a puzzle. Now I guess I'll just mention two more random abilities, like this ground pound that's fun to use, and this sort of flying gliding thingy. You get a better one later, but yeah. And here are just the moves in general. I don't know, overall, they're pretty good. Some can be annoying, but I can sort of see why they're there. You're probably going to have a different experience when you play the game. Tell me if you do in the comments below if you think differently. But I guess we should now move on to the next section. Ukulele only has five worlds, but each are moderately sized. I'd say kind of like Wooded Kingdom from Mario Odyssey. 
Now, there's a hub world that connects all of these together, and as you learn more abilities, you can access more areas of the hub world. The problem is, the hub world is sort of like a spider web. Think of Dark Souls 1, except you don't spend a lot of time in the hub world, so you don't really know your way around. That can get pretty annoying. To access a world, you need pages, and you can expand an already accessed world with more pages. So let's go through each world uh, briefly. Tribal Stack Tropics is the first world, and I'm going to be talking about this one the most. This world is the average green, grassy first level of every platformer you've ever played, but there's a catch. You see, the creators of this game wanted you to be introduced to every single character in this first area. And boy, is there a lot of talking. Throughout the game, talking to NPCs is an occasional fun occurrence, but here it's just always forced down your throat. And believe me, it gets very annoying. Especially for the first level, I don't know why they did it here. Like, they should have just tried harder to cement the gameplay, not random characters. All they had to do was take out a few, like the pigs and the octopus lady, and it might be fine. I just want to go more than three minutes without dialogue. This doesn't mean all characters are bad, though. I mean, I like the fridge lady. She can give helpful upgrades to your, like, health and stamina, and make the screen cool in, like, this retro display, you know, obviously mimicking Banjo-Kazooie. And, I don't know, the first visit to this world, it, it is, it is absolutely terrible. But, it changes when you expand the world. You see, when you expand this world, all of a sudden, there are so many more fun platforming challenges. And hell, puzzles too! One of the most ironic parts is one of the only characters that are added after the world's expansion is Shovel Knight. And it's actually fun to talk to this dude, especially because there isn't too much extra dialogue. Also, the platforming areas are so much more cooler for some reason, like, damn, I was actually finally having fun. Also, the whimsical art style comes out with this huge temple-ish mountain thingy, and the game is beautiful. <sighs> okay, well, I'm done with this world, let's get to the next one. Glitter Glaze Glacier is the second world in the game, and is overall an amazing level because of how open it is. As you can see here, I skipped over many NPCs I disliked or thought didn't matter. The platforming though was so open and fun from the moment you start playing, and it was a delight to explore. There weren't too many new characters, in fact I only remember two, which is perfect. They should have added a few new characters each level just like this one. The expansion to this world is a concealed labyrinth, and that allowed the level to be fun from the start. The cold environment also allowed for some really creative and fun puzzles to be used, it was really good. Overall, this is probably my second favorite level in the entire game. It was really close to being number one, but I think the next one's just a little better. Before we start the next world, I just want to remind you that in between worlds, there's some really fun small platforming segments. So, as you already know, the third world, Moody Maze Marsh, is my favorite in the game. When I first started playing it though, I was scared it was going to be a bad level. But once you get the zipline ability, it's an amazing jungle of platforming. I also really liked the pagey placement, I, yeah, it was just really good. The new characters were as goofy and fun as ever, and there weren't really too many genuinely confusing puzzles. It was really just platforming based. And this level's fun parts hit hard and are some of the most polished parts of the game. I should also mention that this level has my favorite boss fight in the entire game but I'll talk about that in the boss fight section of this video. If you decide to play this game and stop after this level, I honestly wouldn't be that mad. It's the most solid and polished part of the entire game. And let's just say the next level is the exact opposite. Capital Casino is by far the worst world in this game, mostly due to the fact that it's so open and empty. A lot of this world is based on these mini-games, and yeah, some are fun, but it's just really annoying to play five slot machines in a row and not do any platforming. So most of the platforming here is in these small corridors, and the small environment makes things very claustrophobic and not really a lot of fun. Oh yeah, I should also mention there's no pages here at all, instead you get these coins. Now actually, this is a pretty good idea, except for the fact that sometimes you'll do so much just to get like 5 coins, and that's only half a pagey because 10 coins equals 1 pagey. 
I should also talk about this minecart section for a bit, because at first, it's sort of hard, but fun, like an easier version of the cart minigames from the Donkey Kong Country series, which was also made by Rare originally, and again, those people are working on this game, so it kind of makes sense why they wanted to have it in here. Except the fact that you need so many gems. Also, it took me 45 minutes to get enough gems to complete the run. Like, seriously, it's so annoying and tedious. And let me tell you, I love the minecart sections from Donkey Kong Country. I love to play it on my Game Boy Color, it's just no nice and relaxing. And I mean, sure, it's a little difficult, but you don't have to worry about getting a certain number of bananas. Okay, also there's a really, really bad boss. In fact, the worst boss in this game after the minecart section, but I'll talk about that when I start talking about bosses. Even though this level sucks, it has some really cool concept in games. Like this golf section is fun, and the charging roll thing is fun too, but still it feels like it's trying too hard to be a big open level with just these small sections to the side too and it makes the open parts feel so empty and boring and yeah it, it's frustrating to talk about this you have to play this game yourself because once you get up to this level you just realize how bad it is literally the idea of the casino is so cool they just ruined it they just ruined it Galleon Galaxy is the fifth and last level, and at least they end everything on a high note because of how solid this level is. Now, my favorite part is how it gives its random side character an actual reason to be in the game. Doing random stuff for her finally matters a little bit. Also, the boat ability she gives you is used for some really cool sections. This level is just another huge beautiful jungle gym. Oh, also, this small section reminds me of Mario Galaxy. I don't know, I just wanted to say it. Some sections are a little weak, but I love the humor, like this Pagey just leaving his box. Also, there's like some puzzles with all of the consumable abilities you've learned, and it's so cool because it feels like you've finally reached the end and learned everything there is to learn. Overall, there's some very solid worlds and some bad ones, but in all, platforming and puzzles are always at least a little fun. I do really hope you found this part cool, and now we can finally move on to another part of the video. Uh -huh. As you can tell, I am very fond of the platforming in this game. It is the crown jewel of the experience. And it's really cool because all of the different moves you learn, most of them are really fun to just pull out and use in certain scenarios. And it's really good because as the game goes on, the more you learn, the more you feel like you're mastering the systems. Things like the stamina bar can be sort of annoying sometimes, but other than that, it's just it's such a perfect system. Definitely the best part of this game. This is going to be a really quick segment because I didn't script it as intensely as many of the other parts of the video, but yeah, so most of the puzzles in this game are like physically based, like as you can see here, pushing in the right puzzle pieces with a uh, ground pound, and then yeah, there's also this thing where you have to roll up the hill using the correct ability that you learn. Again, it's very, very basic and really just using physical properties that you learn. There's this one in which you have to use, you know, the sonar ability in the right order. You you know, they tell you the order. So again, it's really, really easy if you know to use the sonar ability. Sometimes, as I said earlier, it's annoying because you might not know exactly what ability you're supposed to use. But I still think for the most part, most of the puzzles are really easy. They're quick. They're fun. But sadly, in levels like Capital Casino, they're just placed way too much. But in every other level, they're scattered around pretty perfectly. And yeah, they're really just used as a break from gameplay. That's not a bad thing, though, because, you know, games need breaks in the main gameplay to keep them interesting and, you know, to change up the loop of the gameplay. So yeah, uh, puzzles are pretty good. Let's move on to the next part of the video. 
So every world in this game has a boss that's accessed after the world is expanded. I'm only going to go through the first four bosses because I only need to show these to express my points. Before I start, I just want to let you guys know that these are probably the most tedious and unpolished parts of the game. Let's start. The Great Rampo is first at bat and is luckily a more simple and faster boss, not including a few deaths that are bound to happen with his janky mechanics. You run up a slope, dodge some logs, jump onto a ledge, dodge some fire, and then break his teeth. How hard can that get? Well, first of all, the final log wave felt just impossible to pass without falling and had me extremely confused. Also, sometimes it's just impossible to go up to the ledge without being burned or thrown into the thorns. So as you can see, when I finally got past the third and final wave, it was just luck and I still don't know how I was supposed to actually win. Overall, this boss was filled with jank and annoying mechanics, but at least it isn't as hard as some of the fights that are later on this list. Breeze Block is the next fight with a decent buildup. If you remember from the world section of this video, there's a labyrinth leading up to this boss, and the first time in this place I was flustered and confused. There were side activities, hints to different passages, and puzzles that I was able to use late game abilities to break, which I guess is a reason why the world and ability progression is bad. The boss needs to be killed because he's messing with Bernie the Boiler, and you have to go inside Bernie the Boiler to kill him, and yeah, it's pretty creative. The entire fight is lighting these torches and then dodging ice. Like, literally that's the whole thing, and it lasts minutes. This fight has one stage that's dragged on for minutes, and also it's a fight where getting hit feels more like the boss's fault than yours. I mean, sure it's creative, but it's really really dull and hell, just not fun. This is not the worst fight in the game, but at the same time, it's a sign of what's to come. And yeah, it's really bad. Trev the Tentacle is next, and well, it's probably my favorite boss fight in this game, and really just an amazing boss fight in general. So, this fight just matches the world so well with this green sewage and moss gross vibe, and is so creative yet simple with different phases and moves. Look here, when I got hit from this shockwave thing, I felt so sad yet determined. The next time he struck, I was ready, and I dodged it really easily. That's an indication that the boss is great. Now, the next phase, the ground gets wet and icky, and it works so well with the environment of sewage and pipes. Just like the level this boss is based on, this fight is extremely polished and creative. Hell, look at how his eye falls out at the end, it's just so perfect. When I played this boss, I was so surprised at how good and polished it was. And, you know, I had high hopes for the next boss, but somehow the next boss was probably the worst boss I've ever played in, like, all of my years of gaming. Like, not just in this game, out of so many games I've played. I've beaten the Capra Demon from Dark Souls and ONS, and I still think this boss is somehow more infuriating and just annoying. So who is this guy? Its name is Inept, and remember that this boss is right after the minecart section I talked about earlier. And this is basically just two annoying challenges right after another. You have the annoying minecart section with a quota of gems to fill, and then this really terrible boss. Well, the first phase is hopping over bombs and dodging this guy's head. It looks fun, right? Well, if you're not perfect, it can easily force you to take a hit if you don't line up the entry. Also, this phase alone is long enough to be its own fight. Like, this phase is at least 2-3 to three minutes of this one mechanic. Then, it transitions to this jumping over him section, which also is long as hell, but at least it's easy, right? Well, not before he throws up this mix-up without even indicating when. He literally forces you to take the hit, and it's extremely unfair. Once again, I beat ONS in Dark Souls 1, Slippery Climb in the High Road, and Crash Bandicoot 1, but somehow this silly platformer boss fight breaks me. <sighs> okay. Well, at least the last phase is decent, like, it's not that hard. If it's your first time though, you will definitely mess up, but once you master it, you get a little bit of that cool feeling when you beat a Dark Souls boss, but still, it's it's not that satisfying. When I saw this boss die, I was not satisfied at all. He definitely broke me before I broke him, it, it was honestly terrible. Yeah, so all the bosses in this game are basically trash, except Trev, all my homies love Trev. And I'm done being angry, you guys get the point, I fucking hate this stuff, I'm sorry for using a curse word, but yeah, let's, let's move on, please. 
As you can tell, I love the music in this game. I've been throwing it in throughout this entire review. I've even put in tracks like the original Banjo-Kazooie theme to show you guys how this game sort of replicates that same feeling as the original Banjo-Kazooie in many cases. But at the same time, many of the tracks in this game, you know, they definitely wander a little further from that, you know, original baseline. As you can hear right now, this really orchestra-infused track, it's really beautiful. They try a lot harder to have many different sounds, and it's really good, like the minigame music can be really perfect same thing with the boss fight music and the main theme i it stuck in my head dude that thing was stuck in my head while i was editing it it's so good okay so i just want to leave you with that the music in this game is incredible in my opinion especially in places you know like the hub world the hub world has this really big booming theme to show how you're in you know this big booming world this factory it's I think everything fits perfectly, some people may argue with me, but yeah, that's my opinion. So, this is basically the end of the video, and I'm just gonna end with this little conclusion. Okay, so yeah, in all ukulele, it's a pretty fine game. Uh, you shouldn't go into it thinking that it'll be the most polished experience. There's a few parts of it that I do think are really good to play, though. You know, again, I sort of did expect a little more. This definitely doesn't hit, you know, this is this is pretty mediocre. This is nowhere near a good game, in my opinion. It's just a decent game, okay? And the video is over, guys. This was so so hard to make probably five days of straight up editing you know for most of the afternoon and on that I, the voiceover was also pretty difficult at first of course i got the hang of it you know the further in it's 20 minutes guys this video is over 20 minutes that's that's i never thought i'd make a video past like 15 minutes i am so impressed with myself right now please comment on if you like this long video style if you like this really hyper organized help i have probably more than you know 15 pages of paper with just full filled with script for this video i had to script this thing so intensely it's so so fulfilling though to have this done have 20 minutes of just pure of my thoughts and you know it's all organized perfectly i don't know just in all, thank you guys so much. Please comment with me. Tell me how you feel about this video. Please like and subscribe. I I'm, I really want to do this some more, and I'm definitely going to do this some more. Okay, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so, so much. Have a good day. Have a good night.